Another Parker video, I know. Drama, drama, drama. Let's start off with some of the abuse. Uh, you can't say parkour properly. Thanks, I, I did realise that and if you looked on the side text it was there saying, yeah, I forgot to say it. Parkour, thank you. Uh, the rest of it, uh, you're an fat effing dickhead and all the rest of it from 14 year olds and random abuse sort of doesn't really tell me a lot uh, other than getting you deleted and blocked. So before you leave a comment on this video, you can write anything you want, just don't make it abusive. Okay. Uh, the comments on the last video were very interesting and um, I did troll a little bit because I wanted a reaction from the parkour people and to see their viewpoints and uh, the way it works. I did a research before and I understand parkour. I'll go on to more about that later. But to see, uh, you know, many comments like, You're an effing idiot. Um, it's a sport, you idiot. Oh, oops. I must have read all the information wrong. And then uh, some other guy would say, it's, a, it's an art form. Okay, yeah, I know that, thanks. Uh, it's a discipline. Yeah, that, it is that too, yeah. And then they'd write, no, it's a martial art. And then, you know, it was back and forth, you know, it's just, it is a sport, it is a sport. And then I got about three or four private messages from people defending the fact that it is, a, it is actually a sport. And how dare I insult parkour by not calling it a sport? How do I get my head around this when I'm getting all the information from parkour people and websites to say it's not a sport, but then these people are abusing me to say it is a sport, but then it's a discipline, but no, it's a martial art, no, no it's an art form. Let's leave it at that one. Uh, what else was there? A lot of people said, yeah, look, I know it's not safe, um, but you know, I'm, I'm aware of the risks and dangers of it. And that's great. And people should be aware of the risks and dangers of it. And that was the point of my video is, Videos, you know, a parkour video that says, you know, it's safe if you train hard is sending the wrong message out to a young generation that is doing parkour. It should be, uh, you know, it has its risk. It, it is dangerous. You don't need to whitewash this and with, you know, comments like it's safe. There's just no need for it because it's not. You know, training will reduce the chance of injuring yourself and, uh, you know, your the the exercise and the discipline and everything that goes along with it will help you decide whether you know you're going to make the the landing or not and if your body can handle it it doesn't make it safe and the reason is is because if you're jumping from one pillar to another pillar and you go okay yes it's not too far i know that it's only half a meter it's, it's easy and then you go okay yeah my legs can handle this it's not far i can do this no problem and there's a bit of green moss on it, you slip me, that's it, you're gone. And that's where the safe comes in. And no, amount, no amount of training and no amount of uh, uh, you know, exercise will help you reduce the risk. Sorry, it will re help you reduce the risk. Uh, it will, it doesn't make it safe. You know, nothing's foolproof in life. And, the, the, and that's my point. There's just no reason to advertise something as safe. Gymnastics doesn't do it. Football doesn't do it. Other sports don't do it. So, a bit of wise words there. Uh, okay, uh, so moving right along. Uh, a lot of people doubted my gym qualifications. Um, so I'll just quickly uh, uh, block out last names, here we go. First aids and uh, gymnastics and men's gymnastics and you know, so on. And anyway, you get the idea of that. The reason I've had experience with parkour is because when I was working in gyms, parkour people would come along and use the gym. I know that gymnastics and parkour are different. They do have their similarities though. And one person did point out a good comment and, and I actually agreed with this, which was there's actually a lot between ballet and parkour, which is actually true, but we won't go there because let's just not argue that because, because we don't want to go there. Um, uh, but anyway, sorry, gymnastics and parkour. Uh, when parkour people were coming along using the gym, because it's a soft landing for them to practice on and, and you know, similar equipment that they can use uh, to protect themselves while they're in training, uh, parkour people would come along and I would help. And that's where I got my parkour experience from and gymnastics. 
so that's where that's where I consider that's where my experience comes. I don't claim to be the best best parkour intelligent person in the world. This is only my point of view. What I did find out though is uh, a lot of uh, coaches or teachers rather of this parkour are really really underqualified in my opinion and the reason for that is because uh, the APA so that's the Australian Parkour Association uh, require a first aid certificate and experience in parkour I do not think that's enough if it was something like soccer where you're just sort of kicking a ball around with you know seven year olds or ten year olds it might be a little different but I think parkour is a discipline that requires a lot of training a lot of uh, muscle control balance coordination fall uh, all the risks that are out there and these are not being taught to the parkour teachers because it's it's knowledge handed down from you know from teacher to teacher and when you do something like that knowledge degrades and it's like me sort of saying you know I've I know English for 10 years that makes me a teacher of it it doesn't and that's why we go to university for five years to to learn more about uh, the ins and outs and the things that people don't know and and to spread knowledge and to learn more so if you parkour people are experienced in parkour and your teachers are teaching you if the teachers aren't qualified and the parkour people are just learning from the teachers where is any of the knowledge coming from in my last video I referenced you know probably every time every time you do parkour you will get injured and the reason I said that was because just because you land and you don't get hurt doesn't mean that you're not injured what it, what, it, what I meant was that when you turn 40 you will start feeling it and uh, a lot of gymnastics a long time ago realized that it's great training someone to be a gymnast at their peak age of 21 or you know be Olympic level but by the time they're 30 and their joints and their everything else is stuffed what's the point because you know what you're just training for someone for a short brief of their career but other than once they've left they're no good to the society no point and that's why gymnastics uh, taught to reduce accidents on uh, cartilage uh, and uh, joints and everything else is parkour teaching this I'm not sure but there are a lot of courses that are out there that coaches can do that would help the parkour teachers such as Australian Institute of Sports um, uh, courses on and, and these aren't sports specific these are these cover all sports and it teaches you about the human body and it teaches you about uh, dealing with parents teachers uh, dealing with uh, team environments uh, you know younger children uh, how to you know uh, get around everything and um, but uh, parkour doesn't require this first aid and uh, you know a bit of experience off you go very a little bit disappointing that parkour other than that um, I, I, I like parkour I like watching it I just wish it was more controlled it just seems very uh, young people young person generated sport that doesn't seem to have a regulation of what you can do or what you can't do what is safe and what isn't safe so uh, maybe that's something parkour could work on anyway gang take it easy and um, I'll catch you around. No more parkour videos, I promise.